Once upon a time in Spain, in the village of La Mancha, there lived a man named Don Quixote. He loved to read books about the adventures of knights. As years passed, Don Quixote started to imagine that he was a knight. He was determined to get himself a squire. He thought his neighbor, a poor farm laborer with a family, was very well qualified for the office of a squire to a knight. Don Quixote convinced the farmhand named Sancho Panza to be his squire on his travels. Sancho wanted to take a very good ass he had, as he was not much given to going on foot. About the ass, Don Quixote hesitated a little, trying whether he could call to mind any knight errant, taking with him an esquire mounted on assback. But no instance occurred to his memory. Your worship will not forget about the island you have promised me. For be it ever so big, I'll be equal to governing it. Thou must know, friend Sancho Panza, that it was a practice very much in vogue with the knights errant of old to make their squires governors of the islands or kingdoms they won. I am determined that there shall be no failure on my part in so liberal a custom. On the contrary, I mean to improve upon it. Don Quixote, along with Sancho and his horse, Rosinenti, set out on an adventurous journey. When they had travelled a few miles, they suddenly saw 30 or 40 windmills scattered over a plain. When Don Quixote saw them, his eyes began to shine. Look, friend Sancho Panza, 30 or more monstrous giants present themselves. I mean to engage them all in a battle and slay them, and with those spoils we shall begin to make our fortunes. For this is righteous warfare, and it is God's good service to sweep evil from off the face of the earth. What giants? Those with the long arms. But your worship, those are not giants but windmills, and what seem to be their arms are the sails that make the millstones go. Sancho, I understand you are scared. It is better if you stay away and pray while I fight with the giants single-handed. It will be an honour to conquer them in such an unequal combat. Master, believe me, that's a windmill. In spite of pleas and outcries of Sancho, Don Quixote spurred Rosinente on. Just at that moment, a breeze began to blow and the sails of the windmills began to move. Fly not, cowards and wild beings, for it is a single knight that attacks you. With these words, Don Quixote charged forward on galloping Rosinente and drove his spear with such force into one of the sails that the spear was shattered to pieces, while the poor knight fell from the saddle and Rosinente fell stunned to the ground. Sancho hurried to his master's side. Did I not tell your worship to mind what you were about? For they were only windmills. Hush, friend Sancho, the fortunes of war fluctuate, that's all. I think the same sage Fristin, the magician who had carried off my study and books, had turned the giants into windmills in order to rob me of the glory of vanquishing them. With much difficulty, Sancho succeeded in placing Don Quixote back on his horse, and they proceeded on their way to another place, for there, said Don Quixote, they could not fail to find adventures in abundance and variety, as it was a great thoroughfare.